The Story of Steam Part 1 Early Developments in Steam Power Hi, welcome to The Story of Steam. I'm Ross Maynard and this is Part 1 Early Developments in Steam in which we look at the work of the early pioneers of steam power Thomas Newcomen and James Watt. Early Steam That steam has power has been known for thousands of years. The Roman engineer Vitruvius describes a simple steam turbine in the 1st century BCE. This is commonly called Hero's Engine after Hero of Alexandria, who described its construction a hundred years later. It's not known if this device was ever used to drive machinery. In the late 1400s, Leonardo da Vinci drew a steam-powered cannon, but it was never produced and would seem every bit as dangerous to the operator as the earlier gunpowder cannons. In 1606, Geronimo de Ayaz y Beaumont, a Spanish inventor, was granted a patent for a steam-powered water pump for draining mines. This was apparently successful, although no examples of his pump remain. Thomas Savory the scientific study of steam and its properties developed throughout the 17th century, and in 1698 Thomas Savory, a military engineer from Cornwall in England, patented a steam pump for use in mines. This was not a steam engine in the sense of Thomas Newcomen's or James Watt's, rather steam was admitted into an empty chamber which was then sealed. The steam cooled, creating a vacuum. A pipe from the vessel was put into the water to be raised and a tap opened, sucking it into the vessel. A pipe to the surface of the mine was then opened and more steam admitted to the vessel, pushing the water up the pipe and out of the mine. There were many problems with this pump, partly due to the poor engineering capabilities of the time and partly because the distance that the water could be sucked into the vessel and then pushed out again was very limited. It's believed that it was only effective to a depth of around 30 feet. However, the patent that was granted to Savory was very wide-ranging and covered all methods of pumping water using steam for 21 years. Thomas Newcomen It's likely that Thomas Newcomen knew Thomas Savory. Newcomen was an ironmonger in Dartmouth and Devon. He did a lot of work with mines and became familiar with Savory's pumping engine and he worked out how it could be improved. Thomas Newcomen replaced Savory's vacuum vessel with a piston, which was used to work a beam engine which then operated a pump. This method was more efficient and effective than Savory's simple steam pump. Restricted by Thomas Savory's patent, however, Newcomen went into partnership with Savory around 1712, and Newcomen's more advanced design was marketed under Savory's patent. Thomas Newcomen's steam engine was very successful in the mining industry. Newcomen himself died in 1729, but the company had formed with Savory continued. By 1733, about 125 of Newcomen's engines had been installed to pump water out of mines across Britain and Europe, and by 1770, about 600 Newcomen engines had been produced. Their use continued into the 19th century, as they were cheaper to build and simpler to maintain than James Watt's engines. The relative inefficiency of Newcomen's engine was not a problem where the coal was mined. James Watt James Watt is the most famous name in the history of the steam engine, and his innovation was certainly a major step forward in engine design. But James Watt charged high prices, and it took 30 or 40 years for his designs to really take hold in industry. Working as an instrument maker in the University of Glasgow, James Watt was asked to repair a model of a new coming engine in 1763. Already interested in steam as a source of power, Watt realised that Newcomen's design was very inefficient because the piston had to be heated and then cooled in the same cycle. Watt began to experiment with ways to improve the design. In 1765, he came up with the idea of a separate condenser. Steam was vented from the piston and condensed in a separate chamber. Thus, the piston could be kept hot 
and the engine could be much more efficient and faster. In 1768, James Watt received funding from John Roebuck and Joseph Black to produce a working engine. John Roebuck was the mastermind behind the Caron Ironworks, one of the largest ironworks in the early Industrial Revolution, while Joseph Black was an influential chemist who discovered carbon dioxide and developed some early theories of thermodynamics. John Roebuck registered a patent for Watt's engine in 1769, and the first steam engine was installed at the Caron Ironworks in 1776. However, John Roebuck had gone bankrupt in 1772, and Matthew Bolton had bought the patent. James Watt moved to Birmingham in England in 1775 and set up a partnership with Matthew Bolton. The firm of Bolton and Watt would play a major role in powering the Industrial Revolution. Bolton and Watt Matthew Bolton was a successful manufacturer of metal products in Birmingham in England, but his business really took off after the partnership with James Watt. Matthew Bolton had extensive contacts in the engineering and metal industries, giving James Watt access to the most advanced technologies of the time. These contacts included John Wilkinson, who had developed a metal boring machine in 1774. This was used to bore iron cannons, but it also enabled Bolton and Watt to make precision engineered cylinders and pistons for their steam engines. This and other advances made Watt steam engines much more reliable and efficient. The first four Bolton and Watt engines were installed in 1776. Two of them were used to pump water at mines, and one was used to operate the blast furnaces at John Wilkinson's ironworks. James Watt's engine used about half the coal of Newcomen's, and his company developed an innovative sales technique. They sold their engines on the basis of an annual payment equal to one third of the value of the coal saved in comparison to a Newcomen engine performing the same work. However, Bolton and Watt did not gain much business from the coal mining industry. They had abundant coal available and continued to use the Newcomen design of engine being cheaper to install and easier to maintain. James Watt did not rest on his laurels with Matthew Bolton, he realised that the up-and-down motion of the beam engine limited its use. In 1781, James Watt patented a gear, called the Sun and Planet Gear, that converted the power to a rotative motion suitable for grinding, weaving and milling. Bolton and Watt steam engines began to power the factories of the Industrial Revolution. Further improvements were patented in the 1780s, which added together to make Watt's engines five times more efficient than the Newcomen engine. It's believed that Bolton and Watt had sold around 600 engines by the time their patents expired in the early 1800s. James Watt retired a wealthy man in 1800 and died in 1819. The firm of Bolton and Watt continued making steam engines until 1895, when it was bought by W.T. Avery, the manufacturer of weighing scales. Bolton and Watt's famous Soho foundry in Birmingham remains the headquarters of the Avery Company. James Watt was a prolific inventor. As well as the steam engines he's famous for, he invented a commercially successful copying machine that was in use in businesses until the early 20th century. He also developed a method for bleaching cloth in 1788, although this was superseded by Charles Tennant's invention of bleaching powder in 1799. However, as we shall see in part two of the story of steam, James Watt was not interested in high-pressure steam, considering it too dangerous, and the company of Bolton and Watt missed out on the opportunities that developed in building steam locomotives. Come back for more in part two of the story of steam. <laughs>